Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to Nostalgia Unboxings. I just, before I start the actual, the show so to speak, uh, I'd like to apologize for not uploading a video last week, but um, I tried to post it on the channel in this weird thing, so I don't know how many people actually saw that, but uh, I had surgery on Monday, on like last Monday, and uh, it's kind of hard to film a video two days after surgery, so... <laughs> Uh, I would have liked to, but it was just not in the cards for me, so I'm, uh, I'd like to apologize for that. And uh, regular video uploading should uh, assume resume as usual now, except for one little thing. Uh, I'm going to try to switch my upload schedule over to uploading on Wednesday evenings from now on uh, to hopefully, you know, get better reach and for more of you guys to see my videos as they are uploaded and whatnot. So there might be like one more small delay. Um for the next video after this, just so we can get everything shifted over to being on Wednesdays. So, I guess future apologies for that as well. Anyway, on to the show. So, today I have two boxes of uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Dragons of Legend, the complete series. Uh, these were 15 bucks each, and uh, I got them at a gaming store in Westmont called Hot Sauce Gaming, so shout out to them. Uh, this is in Illinois, so if you guys want to check them out, you know, be my guests. They seemed pretty cool. It was my first time ever going into that store, but uh, it was really nice. They were really helpful, and, you know, they had the stuff. So, you know, A+. plus. So this is a special set with each pack having, I think, 15 cards each. Actually, I should say somewhere. Hold on. Two Dragons of Legend, the complete series packs. Each pack needs 18 cards, so I was wrong. So these are a special Yu-Gi-Oh set that has more cards than usual. It's like a supplementary thing. And it's supposed to be the, like, culmination, the complete series of the Dragons of Legend products that they have been doing for the past, like, I want to say maybe, like, six years, but I could be wrong about that. So I'm not sure if this has reprints of, like, all the cards they released in all the Dragons of Legend sets, but I think... I think it should have most of them, and it definitely has some of the iconic ones. Here, I'll start opening it as I speak here, just to save some time. But yeah, it seems like a pretty cool set. Um, I think the original Dragons of Legend was the first release of the special dragon cards that were in the final, or no, second to last season of the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime, the Waking of the Dragons season. So we got Tamias, or Eye of Tamias, the Fang of Critias, and the Claw of Hermos, which is really cool, because I remember wanting these cards so bad as a kid. Um, they looked so awesome in the anime, man! So, they finally did get released eventually, and maybe I can get my hands on at least one of them, hopefully. And so, here, we also have the their Night Forms, which are also openable from this. Wait, there's a big warning here. Choking hazard, small parts, not for children under three years. Oh, it's because there's a uh, there's a D6, I believe, inside each one of these boxes. So that would be that. And the most important card of all that we can pull here is the alternate art Dark Magician Girl, the Dragon Knight, with the art that is on the box here instead of its usual one. But you could also pull the usual one because I know uh, another YouTuber named Dzeef he opened three boxes and he ended up pulling both of them. <laughs> so it's kind of weird that you can pull two different arts of the same card. But, uh, hey, I'm not complaining. It's Dark Magician Girl, the Dragon Knight. So anyway, let's uh, pop this thing open. Oh, I'm so glad this packaging was so easy to open up aside from just the, uh, oh, wow. I was expecting this to sort of like a little holder thing, but the packs really are just tossed in here. That's interesting. Usually, ooh, so we'll save the promo card for after we do the two packs, because I always I always like surprising myself. Anyone curious about the promos? There are, what is this? Several of them, to put it easily. There's the retrain of uh, Thousand Dragon, which is brand new, right up here. There's a Time Wizard retrain, which I'm kind of, uh, I'd be happy if I pulled that, because I think that's pretty cool. There's a Harpy Lady Synchro Monster now. There's a, another Jinzo Monster, an Xyz Monster this time. This is one of the, um, the Charmer cards, the new Charmer cards. So this is, actually represents Gaga Gigo? Or what was the name? Gigo. There's like five cards in the line, and only one of them is a member of like the Charmer thing, because he goes like, yeah. If you know Yu-Gi-Oh, you know what I'm talking about, but it's one of them. It's this little reptile guy here. 
I'm not familiar with this card. I know I've seen like the image, but unfortunately I do not know what it's called. And I think the most valuable one from this group is uh, this right here, which is very hard to read. It is Xyz Import. I think that one is worth like eight bucks, but uh, I could be wrong. Um, I will try to put prices for each of the pulls, each of the bigger pulls at least, um, somewhere in the video with like a little clever edit and maybe like a little total at the top, but we'll see how that works out. So we have our dice, which is, we have the Claw of Hermos, nice red dice. Oh man, this is like, what kind of packaging is this? There's like no easy tear place anywhere. Hold on. I'm going to cut my fingers off doing that one day. But I think that'll make an interesting video with a big fountain of blood just squirting everywhere. But here we go. We have this nice translucent red dice. So I guess you could roll to see who goes first and maybe do some counters with that, I guess. It's not something super useful. Or you could be Joey and actually play the dice roll cards in a gambling themed deck. That'd be fun. So, first pack, we have... Bum, 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 bum. I don't think the rare is going to be on the front, but we have Soul Charge. Oh, this card's actually banned, which is fun, but still very cool. Toon Ancient Gear Golem. Very cool card. Legend of Heart. Ice Hand. I think there's Fire Hand as well. It should be in here, I believe. Toon Rollback. Some nice Toon support. Ritual Sanctuary. An interesting card for Ritual decks. Blackwing, Hurricane the Tornado, looking like a JoJo character out here, very swole bird. We have our first rare, we have Shadow Toon, which is very nice. Doom Virus Dragon, oh, I'm so happy to pull this. Man, when freaking Kaiba cheated the shit out of, uh, what was his name, Alistair in the anime by fusing a trap with his monster. Man, this is freaking sweet. I'm really happy. And it is a, oh, it's a nice green foil up in here too. Uh, there's a couple variations in this set and I think some other Yu-Gi-Oh products. So there's green, purple, and I think blue. You can get any of the rares with like the different foilings in addition to the regular one. So I think the green is super, super fitting. Like green or purple would have been the best ones. So Doom Virus Dragon, probably a terrible card because I think Crush Card is also like banned or limited to one, but it is very cool to have nonetheless for the nostalgic memories. Oh, we did it! Oh, first pack! Oh my god! Wait, no, it's the, oh, it's the regular art, but still. <laughs> Dark Magician Girl, the Dragon Knight, with green foiling. Oh my god. All right, that's freaking sweet. This is a good omen. First pack from the first box. Let's go. Cyber Angel Edaten. I remember when this card was annoying as hell in Cyber Angel decks and Duel Links. Thankfully, they're not being really played anymore because of all the ban lists and Duel Links. So, thank God I had enough of them. Wiretap. I've never heard of that card. Maybe it's a good. I don't know. We have Prediction Princess Crystaldine. Not an archetype I'm familiar with either. We have Ayers Rock Sunrise. Wait, isn't this the card that, um, what was his name? Chumley, like, supposedly designed in Yu-Gi-Oh! GX? I think it is, or it's something very similar to it. That's freaking cool if it is. I remember that too, like, I don't know, I really like the weird anime tie-in stuff. Flower Cardian, Pine with Crane, this is an interesting archetype. There's some of, the, some of the cards are in Duel Links, and I've seen people play it, and it's really weird, and I, I personally don't get it with my small pea brain. But, I mean, I guess it's interesting. It's definitely a cool concept. We have the Tripper Mercury. This card is used in some OTKs in Duel Links. So, I'm sorry I talk about Duel Links a lot, too, and not the actual TCG, but I've been playing Duel Links for basically since Duel Links came out. I think I started a couple months after it came out, and I haven't played the TCG in, like, 15 years, maybe? <laughs> so I just, actually, well, maybe 10 years, because I did play on uh, Duel, Dueling, Dueling Network, when that site still existed, in like, back in high school. So, but, yeah, I'm sorry about that. I can't give any, like, super big insights into anything that isn't Duel Links, but Tripper Mercury. We have Prediction Princess Tarotre, Ritual Monster, and Magic Hand. 
We have all the hands. I hope they come in handy. All right, uh, I'll, I'll see myself out. We're first promo is the Wizard of Tomorrow, the Time Wizard Rechain. Very cool. Okay. Wow, so this box has been two for two now. I got the Time Wizard I wanted, and we got uh, Dark Magician Girl, the Dragon Knight. Oh my god! Wait, hold on. We have one more pack. Man, I got so caught up just because of the, the sweet pulls here. Let's pop this bad boy open then. Sorry about that. Man, I got, I got carried away. Hand Holding Genie. Red Eyes Black Dragon Sword, a very cool card. Aquactress Guppy, also a cool card. I kind of wish this was um a more meta archetype in Duel Links, because I kind of like the little fishies. They're kind of cute. Fire Hand, so we have three hands now. Parasycroid, an interesting tech card from a garbage archetype, an otherwise garbage archetype, because you can attack directly for 1600, and... Uh, its materials are actually just generic, just two machine type monsters with the same name. So it's not really, people don't use it in Roid decks, because Roid decks are really bad. <laughs> we have Cyber Angel Ben 10 now, interesting. Ah, my piles are all falling apart. Gate Blocker, this is a cool card. It has a very good effect, but, so it's like a very situational card, but I think this actually has been played in some competitive sideboards and stuff. Just because the effect, uh, the negating effect is actually pretty good. Ooh, what is this? Oh, Tamias, the Knight of Destiny, in, with the gold foil name. Very cool. The Claw of Hermos. So we got one of the dragons, and this one has blue foiling, which I think is nice. It kind of matches the, um, the spell color a little bit with the, the blue background, so that's very cool. And Curry Bandit. Very cool. Another Karibo archetype card. With, ooh, purple foiling. I think this is our, pur our first purple foil of today so far. So, very cool. Love me some Karibos. We have, and then we have Train Connection, Blackwing Revenge, Cypher Wing, Double Magical Armbind, Lord of the Red. This is a card I was also hoping to pull. So this is supposed to be the card that Joey played in the arc against the one dude who played like all the armor cards that like stuck on his body so they were like punching the shit out of each other and then Joey turned into Lord of the Red and they freaking duked it out and ugh, dude that that scene blew my mind when I was like probably eight years old and I finally have the card although I guess the card isn't as good as you know I can't just beat the crap out of my opponent with my fists if I play it but hey it's still a cool card, so uh, kind of odd. I don't think Red Eyes decks actually play it too much, but I mean, hey, it's cool for the nostalgia, which is what this channel is all about, right? We have Guarded Treasure, Protection Princess Petal Leaf, and Zushin the Sleeping Giant. What a bizarre card. I remember when, uh, when this first came out in Duel Links, I saw a couple people trying to make it work in the ladder, and actually just beat people with it, but it's so gimmicky and so strange. But it's a very fun card. I think it was also used in the Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds anime by someone. So I guess it is a iconic, terrible monster. Oh, we actually, in the anime, I'm pretty sure it was iconic because it was such a terrible monster or something. It was, um, I think the whole plot of it was that everyone had, it was one of the most common monsters ever and everyone had one. But it was so bad that no one played it. And then like one of the duelists had like a team where they specifically built their decks around summoning it. And when they played it, they were like the first, it was like the Exodia moment from the original Yu-Gi-Oh! And everyone was like, holy crap, these, these are the first people in the history of Dota to play Zushi and the Sleeping Giants <laughs> successfully. So that's bizarre and uh, that's a fun trivia fact, I guess, about Yu-Gi-Oh! Okay, back to Time Wizard now. I can actually pull them out. Ah, uh, let's take the plastic out here, and we have this nice, very foily time, Wizard of Tomorrow. With 2,000 attack, and it's a spell- I'll read this effect just because I am curious about it myself. It is a spellcaster fusion effect, requiring time wizard and one effect monster, so it's halfway generic, but you still have to run time wizard, <laughs> which is kind of a meme card. But it should be expected, and once per turn, while you control this fusion summon card, 
You can toss a coin and call it. Destroy as many monsters on the field as possible, and if you do, inflict damage equal to half the total attack of the destroyed face of monsters. If you called the coin if you called the coin toss right, your opponent takes the damage. If you called it wrong, you take the damage. So either way, I guess the way they tried to make Time Wizard better is it's guaranteed to blow it um all the clear the board essentially and deal damage. And the coin flip just determines if you or your opponent take the damage. So I mean it doesn't seem like too good of a card, but it's a fun card, and I'm all about that. So it's very, very sweet that we finally got a better Time Wizard, even if it still is a kind of joke card. So on to the next here. Let's clear this stuff up. And we will open our final box. Uh, hopefully we can pull all at least my money's worth. 30 bucks total, 15 for each box, but I am doubtful, but at the same time, it doesn't matter to me because we did pull the Dark Magician Girl already, which was just reward enough. So, oh my gosh, I'm just moving everything around here, okay. Let's pull out, oh, we got another Hermos, oh, oh, almost, I, I caught myself that time, all right, we'll put that right here. We have another Hermos dice. I'll leave this one in the package then, since we do already have it. And we have a Hermos and a Magician Girl pack. Let's open the Magician Girl pack first, for good luck in pulling the alternate Art Magician Girl. And here we go. Number Chaos 73, Abyssal Super Splash. Carboneton. Oh hey, we just got these from an event in uh, Duel Links. Or got them again. I think they were released prior, but uh, again, kind of a meme card used in the anime. Aquactress Guppy, once again. Snowplow Hustle Russell. It's a fun name to say. Celestial Sword Iatos. Ooh, is this an omen? Are we going to pull Guardian Iatos? Toon Rollback again. Ritual Sanctuary again. The Grand Jupiter. Looking like an Evangelion mech. Flower Cardian Light Shower. It's pretty cool. Ooh, number, number 24, oh, this one's really difficult to read. Dragulus the Vampire Dragon, so some vampire support with blue foiling, which looks pretty nice. Toon Mask with the purple foiling. Replay Soul. Number 51, Finisher the Strong Arm. Aquarium Stage, so an Aquactress spell card. The Tripper Mercury again, Flower Gathering. Lord of the Red, once again. We haven't pulled the ritual spell for him yet, unfortunately. And Doble Passe. Ooh, so now we need the ritual spell. And hopefully I have Tamias so that I can play my Magician Girl. Although I don't think it's required for her. So last pack of the video. Oh, let's hope it's something good. We have another Flower Cardian, Zebra, Grass with Moon. We did it! Red Eyes Transmigration. We pulled the ritual card. Alrighty. Prediction Ritual. Flower Cardian Zebra Grass. Black Catastrophe. Aqua Story Urashima. Time Magic Hammer. Another card that I remember from the anime. Dark Dragon Ritual. And we have number 100 Numeron Dragon. That looks like a pretty sweet card. Paladin of Dark Dragon. So this card's kind of crap. It is the Paladin of the Red Eyes, I guess. Since there is the Paladin of White Dragon from way back in the day for Blue Eyes. Then they decided to do Red Eyes. And I think there's a Photon one and a Cybers one too now. Which is pretty cool, I guess. But ugh, could have been something better. And it is in purple foiling, it looks like. Legendary Knight Hermos, also in purple foiling, and our final, oh, that was our final one. Darn, so no, uh, no Iatos, I think, because I think Iatos was a rare, and no um, Timaeus, Eye of Timaeus. So that's kind of disappointing, but what can you do? Oh, also no alternate art, uh, Dark Magician Girl, but hey, we got the regular one, so still, we're still in the plus here in the, on the cuteness department. Double Miracle Armbind, Prominence Hand. So another hand, Red Nova, Reaper Scythe, Dread Scythe, another Guardian card, Shadow Impulse, 
Blackwing, Orochi the Squall, and finally another Magic Hand. Well, that be it. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. And our promo is... Ooh, Jinzo Laird. Let's pop this one open. So we also didn't get the most uh, expensive promo, I don't think. But hey, prices are subject to change. Maybe something will break a Jinzo eventually. Machine Xyz Effect, two level six monsters. And you can detach one material from this card, then target one face up monster your opponent controls, take control of it until the end phase. But it cannot activate its effects or declare an attack. If a trap is on the field, you can tribute one monster, and if you do destroy one face up card on the field, you can only use each effect of Jinzo Laird once per turn. So basically what you want to do is you just, I guess he steals monsters and then tries to, uh, your goal is to steal a monster and then tribute that monster from your opponent to blow something else up on their field to get a two for one. But what else, uh, another thing you could do is you could also, I believe you could use the stolen monster in, um, in Xyz and Link plays and stuff as well. So it has some versatility, which is a pretty cool card. It's pretty good for the archetype, I guess. And it is generic, so you could play it in whatever you really want. Provided you have uh, a deck with face-up, what is it, face-up spells, or was it face-up traps? It's, it's trap cards, so if you have a... If you have a face oh no! Oh, it doesn't even have to be face-up, it could just be a trap card, so very nice! So this is actually a pretty cool card, then. So that concludes this video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed watching. And uh, if you did, please subscribe and drop a comment or two. And of course, a like and dislike. That all helps out the channel a lot. And I'd really appreciate it. See you then, guys. Bye-bye.